Good Sunday morning, everybody. Yo, I want to say thank you. Oh, that's a great hair. That's not a boogie. All right. I just want to say thank you, man, to everybody, um, you know, that viewed uh, this recent episode of the Coleman to Coleman podcast, the C2C podcast, now out on uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm sorry, Facebook, YouTube. Um, in our Roku station. Um, we will be releasing the audio uh, for all of the podcasts um, on um, our uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all of that stuff through Anchor. So, you know, you guys can um, listen to it um, on your drive-in or whatever like that. Um, the podcasts are kind of lengthy, um, but I believe it's some good content in each one of them so far thus far. Um, so, you know, we, we're working, we're working, we're working, uh, we're building this thing as we go. Um, we're making changes and corrections and it's not perfect, but God said go forth. So that's what we're doing as a couple that's been through some stuff as a couple, um, that, that, that hurt and that fought, um, that went through a divorce, that went through some adultery, that that went through so much pain and, and agony. Um, and God restored us. He reconciled us um, to do the work that he called us to do. I think, you know, couples would, uh, they could pull some jewels uh, from what it is that we've been through in our story. You know, I always believe it. We overcome by the words of our testimony, you know, so if we're, if we're, you know, testifying what it is that God done for us and we're being transparent and we're being humble, um, we're being obedient to God. Um, I think, you know, uh, that this thing is going to um, help families and help build healthy relationships uh, within the community, the body of Christ and outside of the church. I just think that God is going to do some amazing things. So if you haven't already, please go over to our YouTube channel. That's s.o.l.e digital networks or our Roku channel check out the Coleman to Coleman podcast leave your comments leave your remarks like share subscribe push the button people uh we're doing it for the glory of God and we're doing it to help build healthy strong family relationships um come on out people come on out to our church where the first outreach and deliverance ministries that uh Word of Faith Outreach and Deliverance Ministries. That's 21 Main Street, Darby PA, 19023. Apostle Byron Hope Lampkin, Pastor Patricia Lampkin, leaders. I believe that there's going to be a word in the house today. As we begin this evangelist, evangelism, uh, evangelistic campaign, as we begin to move um, in a direction that God is calling us to move in, as we begin to be obedient in unity and love, I think God is about to blow some things out of the water. Things have been stagnant for too long within the body of Christ, not just word of faith, but throughout the whole body of Christ. It's been stagnant. We've been losing children by the drove. The young people don't want anything to do with Christ right now due to, you know, hurt, pain, uh, whatever it may have been. Uh, but God is calling our young men and our young women home again. Because they see now that there's nothing out here in this world that's going to satisfy that need that they've been searching for. They also see now that we in the body of Christ, we take mental health seriously, right? Some things you got to talk about. Some things you got to testify about. Some things you got to get over, or get off your chest. Yeah, prayer covers a multitude of things. Oh, I believe it. Yes, sir. I believe it. But sometimes God said you got to go to your brothers and sisters and you got to talk, you got to let that thing out. You got to feel it. It's a, it's, a human, it's a human experience, man. You know, depression, anxiety, fear, frustration. Yeah, God didn't give us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of, of power, love, and the sound mind. He, yeah, he did all of that. But through this human experience, we sometimes we experience fear. We experience anxiety. We experience depression. Jesus himself experienced some anxiety. Check out his Gethsemane experience. He was sweating blood. That, if that's not anxiety, if that's not anxious, then there's something going on. 
But he came to the conclusion after his communication with the father and said, not my will, but thy will be done. And that's what we got to show and teach our young folk. You know, we, yeah, we, it's okay to go through what you're going through. It's okay to go through that experience. It's okay to feel the feelings that you're feeling. It's okay to, 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 to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But guess what? You ain't got to fear that thing because God is with you. His rod and his staff, they come, they cover you, they comfort you. He prepares you a table in the presence of your enemies. It's okay to feel it though. It's okay. But trust that God got you even through the anxiety, even through the frustration, even through the depression, even through the fear. God got you. And he's not going to let it overtake you as long as you stand in his presence. Under his wings of protection. Them arrows, they're going to fly by noonday. But they're not going to come near you. Why? Because God got you. And he's going to set up instead. He's your strong tower. They can't even get over it. But you got to believe it to receive it. And you got to be obedient in your walk with Christ. See, a lot of us, we want the things of God. We want what God has for us. <laughs> we want it. We want the, the 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 cattle, you know, on a thousand hills. We want the mansions and the cars and the houses. But what about the God that blesses you with it? We look at social media and society today and we say, oh, these people ain't living nothing. But they got everything. I go to church. I pray. I worship. I read my Bible. I do all these things and I'm still struggling. No, don't think like that. We walk by faith and not by sight. So whatever you see in now, understand that you serve a big God. And without compromise, he'll be able to open the door that you're trying to walk through if it's in his will. If it's not in his will, he's going to close it. Why? Because it might destroy you. You might get the car. You might get the house. You might get the jewelry. You might get all that. But then you're going to be in debt. And then you're going to suffer more depression. And you're going to suffer more anxiety. And you're going to suffer more hardship and ache and pain. Or you might lie to get it. And then after you lie to get it, you realize you can't handle it anymore. So now you all jacked up through your credit and everything else. And God said, oh, no, man, nothing. Let's stop chasing the things and start chasing the God that gives us the thing. I'm chasing after you. I need him more and more. How about you? God wants to bless you. He wants to bless your socks off. It might not be what it is that you think it is. He might bless you with health. He might bless you with long life. He might bless you with that business idea that you have that's going to be able to sustain you so you don't have to work for the next man and compromise your faith. But what are you willing to let go? Are you willing to let go of your pride? Are you willing to let go of that weed? Are you willing to let go of that liquor? Are you willing to stop sleeping with that woman that's not your wife? Are you willing to stop sleeping with that man that's not your husband? Are you willing to spend time with your kids to nurture and cover them and, and grow them up in the admiration of God, teaching them Bible, teaching them scripture, praying with them at night? Are you willing to do all that thing? Or do you want to continue to live this life of selfishness, fulfilling your own selfish desires? How can you be a man and a woman of God? But yet we continue to allow the world to have our ears, our eyes, and our mouth. You got to cover your sin gates. Because when those things seep into your sin gates, God can't keep blessing you the way that he wants to bless you. A lot of us suffering with pain and, 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 and brokenness and, and, and heartache, and all kinds of diseases and different things like that. Yet we, yet we say we're men and women of God. And when God called you to do that fast, did you do it for the whole 21? Did you pray? Did you eat right? Right? When God called you to stop smoking and drinking and hanging in the clubs and doing all of that other stuff, did you do it? Or did you still go out to the club with your brothers and your sisters and your homies and everybody else because you don't want to let that part of your life go? 
Why is it that we at the body of Christ still have one foot in the world and one foot in the church and then believe that God is going to bless us? He wants your whole heart. Be ye holy, for I am holy. God don't want a half-hearted Christian. God don't want a half-hearted believer. He wants your whole heart. And until we give him our whole heart, we're going to continue going through what we're going through. And I'm not just talking to you, whoever listened to this all the way to the end. I'm talking to myself too. God's been telling me to do some things. And I've been disobedient because I want to hold on to it be, due to the fear of, of having less than because I've been in a place where I was homeless and I didn't have. And I don't want to let go of the thing that's sustaining me that I believe that's sustaining me. When God is saying, you got to let that go so you can empty your hands so I could bless you with something bigger and better. So I, I, I promised myself and I promised God and I, and I said, Lord, and I'm purposing this, this, this 21 days starting at seven o'clock at night to give it all to God and walk in obedience so that I can feel his blessing. And the sovereignty of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah to God. I love you all with the love of God. There's nothing you can do about it. We can do all things through Christ that gives us strength. And never forget, I am my brother's keeper. And I'm also my sister's protector. And so are you. Peace.